In a perfect entrepreneur world, you'd have an idea, start a business, focus on it, make it successful, develop systems and processes and make a profit and hire helpers. And then when everything was stably running like clockwork, extract yourself fully or partially to your heart's desire and start building the next idea. That's the theory. But if you're like me, you ignore logic and start lots of different businesses and projects all at once and divide your focus and flip your attention back and forth and make an occasional hash of things and don't quite achieve your goals in any one area. But at least you've dipped your toes in a lot of interesting waters and learned a lot. So some projects get kind of ignored and others become shiny and when you return back to the original ones, they're a little star for a lot. And that's where I've been. <laughs> so sorry, YouTube. <laughs> I got distracted and I'm back. And I'm trying, as always, to figure it all out. I won't say anything corny about New Year's and resolutions and all that stuff, but we'll just say I'm back. I hope I will be back a lot more soon. Anyway, as I've probably mentioned, and I feel like I'm always going on about it actually, um, I live in Salem, Massachusetts, and the economy in this town revolves around Halloween, as you might imagine. So from late August through the beginning of November, it's crazy busy here, and because of this, <laughs> I have this online store called Keep Salem Odd, and I ramp it way up during that time of year. And in fact, it becomes not just an online store, but an IRL uh, concern where I spend countless hours waking up really early and setting up this nice black and white tent and hanging out yeah. in the cold outside in the town square and talking to thousands of people, mostly tourists, and selling things. And it's pretty weird for me because I am someone who or usually works from home and can not leave the house for days on end. And yeah, I don't usually talk to a lot of people, but it's actually pretty fun. And it's a lot of hard work, but it's worth it to me. And for a finite amount of time, I enjoy being that extrovert version of me. And I do make a lot of money <laughs> during that intense period. So it's good. But um, this year I finished the craziness of October and launched right into this furious speed of <laughs> hand book binding and other paper crafting to prep for Christmas events. And this might be where I misjudged my resilience a little bit. Um, I mean, I did it. I made a preposterous amount of stuff and I vended, vended, vent, vended. That's a bad past tense, doesn't feel right. Um, and I talked to people and I sold things and I got new Instagram followers and all that. But then I got sick, which was probably pretty predictable, but um, nothing super serious. I just had this killer sinus infection and um, it was like the toothache aspect. And, ugh. and then I got my first taste of COVID and not just COVID, but a bonus COVID extended remix album that lasted longer than one would like. Um, way after I wasn't positive anymore, I was still not feeling well for quite some time and not horrible, but not very fully functional either. So uh, it was not great. And uh, here we are, it's the end of the first week in January and um, I'm back. So hi. <laughs> But um, I'm conscious that one of the last videos I made before I disappeared 
in October was a bunch of updates and ideas and things that had no closure. So I will try to update you on those things in case you are an extremely keen viewer who remembers that for some reason. And then I will get back to the topic at hand. But uh, firstly, yes, eBay did come to my house and spend a day filming uh, to do one of those meet the seller things. Uh, it was a crew of three people and it was a really fun day and they were great and um, I was feeling reasonably eloquent thanks to copious cups of strong coffee and the video was supposed to come out for Halloween because Salem but they emailed me at some point and said something super vague about corporate changes something something blah 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 I don't even know and that it wasn't going to be used at this time and maybe later and so anyway I think I was too weird but or they didn't want to focus on ephemera which is what they had me mainly talk about um so maybe it will come out someday but I wouldn't hold your breath and I'll let you know <laughs> um and I think I also mentioned in that video that I was going to start making reseller packs and posting them on eBay and giving you guys, my YouTube friends, uh, discount codes for them. And I still plan to do that to some degree, but I, it just hasn't really happened yet. And uh, I do have like a bin of stuff <laughs> to photo and to list and it's a bin, not a reality. It's weird how much bins play, how big a role bins play in the reseller consciousness. Huh. And of course I've been, as usual, thinking a lot about my eBay business and how it did last year and what to change this year and cross-listing and sell-through rates and business models and blah 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 blah. But more on all that in upcoming videos and lots of juicy, helpful how-to eBay content instead of this philosophical rambling. But back to that. Yes. Okay. So I keep thinking about the concept of focusing on one thing, one project, one goal, one business, how that undivided attention is theoretically far more valuable than splitting your resources amongst diverse projects. I mean, not just theoretically. I think probably focusing your full attention on your goals is the way to go um, for most people. And I've tried to fit myself in that mold and I've often felt guilty for not doing so, but it just doesn't work well for me for some reason. I mean, for years, I did focus just on design. I ran a design firm and I learned everything I could about running a design firm. And I went to the conferences and I saw all the famous people speak and I got them to sign my books or had drinks with them at bars and uh, I networked with potential clients and mentors and I, constantly innovated my processes and streamlined and cared and uh, then I got burnt out. <laughs> I mean, we're talking a couple decades in, but I got very burnt out. Um, not on designing per se, but on the rest of it. The admin, the hustle, the client facing presentations, the convincing people of things, the the constant uphill battle to be perceived as the expert that I was instead of, you know, artsy fartsy art school lady or whatever. Um, and I just, I got burnt out and I wanted more variety and I wanted to learn about different things and use different skills and leave my freaking desk once in a while and stop clicking the mouse so much and heal my wrists because for some reason design software involves thousands of times more clicking more mouse clicks than any other kind of software i don't know why it makes my wrist hurt it makes my shoulder hurt 
But anyway, so I won't regale you with my whole life story at the moment, but um, just fast forward five years from that burnout point, and here I am doing a tiny trickle of legacy design projects once in a while for clients, but mostly reselling and also designing stuff for Keep Sale and Odd and running that online store and the pop-ups and looking into wholesaling and of course also here unmonetized as yet in my YouTube content empire and yes that is a dream of mine to get monetized this year so please stay with me <laughs> um, so would each of these projects probably do better if they were my sole focus? Probably. Maybe. But would I be happy? <laughs> Just saying that goes so against the way I was raised that work is hard and then you die. Or that, you know, you put your whole life into this one job and then you retire and maybe you're worthy and all that stuff where like your work and your contentness were not synonymous and your you know life and your work were not the same thing they were you know do one then you then you might earn the other but anyway in today's day and age I would like to feel comfortable and content working, you know? <laughs> um, and a coach that I know calls this drive to do all these different things being multi-passionate, which I think is a very uh, flattering term for it. And a YouTuber that I really like, whose name is Elizabeth Phillips, who I'll link below, um, calls it organized chaos, and I feel like that's more my speed. <laughs> um, my husband calls it fidgety, uh, but really, whatever it is, I find I thrive the most when I'm doing a lot of different things. Like, uh, when I ran my design firm, there were different clients, and each had a different project or set of projects, and it was like multitasking on several different businesses at once in its own way and there were competing deadlines and so it was kind of that same dynamic in a way even though it was all one distinct sort of theoretically same umbrella of design um, even when I worked at in-house design places early in my career a lot of them still had that energy um, like, I worked at WGBH, and I got to do design for Antiques Roadshow, but also Arthur the Aardvark, and also Frontline, and also Mystery, and also, I don't know, whatever other public television shows, but they all have their own totally different set of, you know, goals and problems and design standards, and so it was like having different clients, even though they were all client, you know, projects of WGBH. Um, I mean, I did also have jobs where I worked, you know, in-house at a bank or a insurance agency or places like that. And yes, that was my numbing and unchallenging. And luckily I was able to stop doing that sort of thing mostly, you know, a few years into my career. So I'm talking a lot about myself and I'm sorry, but this all is an example that is leading up to a hypothesis that is what I want to share today. Um, and that is, there are no rules, especially if you work for yourself or partially work for yourself or are trying to work for yourself. I believe in what Cal Newport calls deep work and I do it a lot but I do it serially on different projects because that's what my brain seems to like and I like having a lot of plates in the air even though it might seem stressful but 
I get muddled without that kind of stimulation and complication. And I know conventional business wisdom says I should put all my eggs in the basket I'm trying to make the success of and at present. And I think I just define success as being something more than the usual metrics. And part of it for me is to be learning and stimulated and not getting burnt out. So I want to sell stuff, I want to help people with their businesses, and I want to design stuff and put it in a quirky store. And all of these things will nag at me if I neglect one of them for too long. So I can only say I've taken this information I've learned about myself and I've crafted it into the best way of working that I can find so far for me, which is, like I said, this organized chaos. Or if you want to be polite, multi-passionate entrepreneurship or whatever. Um, because there are no rules. And I'm telling you this because I want to believe it too. And it's taken me a long time to you know, undo, unbuckle the yoke of my upbringing and society's norms and, you know, what we were taught in school when I was a kid and how the role model set before us acted. It's taken me a long time to realize that I don't have to, I don't have to <laughs> do that. There are no rules. So... I'm going to make the systems and the infrastructure that gives me the um, brain happiness and hopefully also the, you know, traditional metrics of success, like paying the bills and all that stuff. Um, you know, I'm still trying to figure out how to piece it all together and accommodate my what I think is my best way of working and my need to exist in a late stage capitalist society and you know the mortgage and that stuff and there's other dichotomies like wanting to be part of the local and the global community and community building and per or participation at least and also being kind of quasi reclusive and being responsible, but also being spontaneous and free. So I'm sticking to my theory that there are no rules and that I can figure out how to do this. So as the new year rolled in last weekish, for the first time in a while, I felt like I can make it work. Maybe I have seasonal focuses. Maybe I keep building things simultaneously and gradually and then add help to make up for the lack of me in certain projects at certain times. Um, I don't work at a bank. <laughs> and I'm sorry if you do, unless you like it, in which case, awesome. But I can have deep work and organize chaos within the boundaries of being, you know, a good citizen of the universe. There are no rules, only the ones that we create for ourselves. Does this make sense? What rules are you making and breaking in your business? And how is that going? Do you think my, my hypothesis is helpful that there are no rules make it work for you? I hope it is. Okay, I'll see you soon. Thanks.